welcome to episode six of the loveliest yarn company blog bit of an extra this one um because uh, i think some of you would have seen me on the Christie's hammock christmas last night so i thought i would just jump on and do a quick video about the jumper and about the whole experience so firstly thank you all for all the really kind really nice messages it was a bit i have to admit yesterday before the show i was i was more nervous than i was before any of the filming or anything because you kind of think what did i say do i look like a wally <laughs> so that was really pleased it was edited fine although I do look a bit dafted sometimes and I was not aware that they were going to put Yeti in a bath mat <laughs> into it but you know if you're going to say it and it was true so I was really pleased I was really happy and I think um, Jamie, Sylvia and Helen were as well because we, we have a little Instagram group which is nice we're kind of talking about it before and we were nervous so it was really lovely and thank you for all the lovely messages and um, I have to say though I'm glad it's done I'm glad it's on Oh, I feel like I can have Christmas now without worrying that I made a wally of myself on national television. So with that said, I, a lot of people have asked me what it was like, why it was filmed. So I'll just talk a little bit about that and then I'll show you the jumper which is here. I left this in the bedroom the other day when I was taking the photographs for the vlog and Simon walked in. I think it scared the life out of him. You'll often find I have three mannequins for shows and I leave them in the house sometimes if you're doing photographs. And Simon's like, will you stop leaving them places? <laughs> you walk in, you think there's someone there. So I'll show you um, the jumper as well in a sec. Um, so what was it like? I applied normally. I saw it on, I don't know what sort of spur me on to it. I saw it online um, and I just applied. I didn't hear, expect to hear anything. I think a lot of people apply for it. Um, then I got a response and well, they fit in another form and then kind of it went there was a, lot, a little bit of back and forth could I send some more pictures of finished items that I'd done could I send some garment pictures you know and what they're really looking for is that you can knit that it's going to be your own design and that you can do a 90 minute speed knit and it was interesting because they were you know proving that you can knit and I'm like I can totally knit like that you don't need to check but they have to check obviously because it might be somebody designing a jumper knitting it for you and you might not be able to knit and that would kind of spoil the 90 minute challenge the 90 minutes sitting there without knitting is tricky um so I heard, I got the news then in middle of September and I was on my way to Perth and I missed a phone call from the uh, production company and I thought, oh, am I in or out now? Because I knew I'd been on the shortlist. They were very good. They, they told us all the way through where we were in the process. Um, so I rang them back and they said I had a place that was very exciting and they checked availability of dates and all those kinds of things. Would I be available on the 9th of October for filming? And I thought... The day before the Ali Panic set up, yeah, yeah, I'm available. <laughs> like, I don't really mind. As long as it wasn't the day of, it didn't matter. So I went to Perth and then I came home and then I started the jumper. And I knit and I knit and I knit and I knit. And I was still finishing it the night before. I did the socks and bobbles because I totally underestimated. I think my initial estimate in, they ask you for how long you think it'll take. I said 80 hours. I think it was 150 in the end. Um, so I was knitting right up to the night before I think and attaching things to it and stuff so they really got the production company who I raised the roof uh, basically Glasgow were super um you know they were they organize all the stuff you they tell you where you're filming you go to the house you stay in a hotel overnight before it um and then you get up at nine o'clock the following morning meet everybody in the lobby and you're away so I met Helen Sylvia and Jamie I'd met Sylvia the night before because when we were having dinner I said to my mom um I, if I bring knitting, I meet knitters. I was like, if they're there, it'll attract them. Like a honey, honey trap, really, with, only with knitting. Um, so I met Sylvia the night before. I was like, oh, you're on the show. It was lovely. I hadn't met the others. Um, but I've never met three people who I got on with so well, so quickly. I think we were just in stitches the minute we met. It was perfect. Because, you know, when you, you have something in common with someone that you love, it's really easy to kind of get to know them. I did discover as we were walking up to the house that none of them had brought knitting. For what was going to be a day of sitting? I was like, oh, you are not knitters. What? Although there was some knitting located in the house, but out of the producers, I think um, everybody else had a knit on that. I had knitting. <laughs> I was not sharing my knitting though. Um, so that was good. We got to the house. The house is very nice. It's a private residence um, and you're not supposed to take any pictures or anything. And that's, you know what? I wouldn't want people taking pictures of my house. Um, so we were there and we then we went for the speed knit nearly really quickly actually from when we arrived obviously the health and safety brief thing we were told not to photograph any of the taxidermy that was in the house really old taxidermy it was very 
there's some very fine examples of texture from like you're talking about decades ago nobody's doing this currently i don't think in the house um it was fascinating and then we went to the speed knit and you'll have seen a lot of that and thankfully you will have seen not all of it because uh, there's definitely some panic towards the end um that was really fun and then it was there was some pen we were told they took some shots of us waiting you know like looking pensive and you'll see in some of the other episodes that people have been sitting and waiting and looking pensive i don't think they got a good shot of us because we were laughing too much there was just it was really funny like helen at one point was walking up and down and i was like oh please just think about the alley pally think about the setup look serious and then you'd see something and you'd be like really <laughs> no, it just it was really fun um then we went and we had lunch and it was very nice and it was all you know we're sitting around and talking and then we were like oh let's have a little show and tell jumpers i have to say the minute helen took hers out of the wrapping i was like let's all go home now because it was astonishing it is in person i actually don't think you just it doesn't do justice to something even though you could tell it was very beautiful on the tv last night in person it's just got the most beautiful drape it's beautifully made and like even like a, it's not as obvious on TV, but there's a beautiful fair isle yoke on the sweater as well as all of the lace and the beading. And I love fair like that is it was just so subtle and so beautiful that it was just oh it's awesome. And obviously, I couldn't have told you though between probably the other three it would have been hard. But I, I you know though you kind of have a feeling you think yeah that's that's beautiful. Um, and they did tell us as well that Arlie and Carlos were judging Arlie and Carlos were judging it um, as well earlier on just to kind of put that in. Um, and then we had, what did we do then? Oh, we were taken away. Well, our family members arrived. So for the jumper competition, because it's a catwalk, you're a member of your family, which is lovely. So my mommy was with me. Um, and they were all downstairs. We were upstairs. We were standing there. And I'll tell you now, it was the start of October. It was quite warm. And so they were wearing a kilo of yarn. <laughs> we were warm um it was really fun it was a bit unnerving waiting because you're thinking oh, am i gonna make it down the stairs they feel i was wearing wedges um i was like right uh, so if you see me looking a bit kind of as i come down the stairs and i'm kind of like <laughs> dinosaur walk it's because i was afraid i was going to slip down you know you don't think about your footwear when you're um planning it and then obviously the judging it was really funny because what you don't see is that off screen there's a bit of, obviously they're judging the jumpers they look very closely at them and they're talking Norwegian they asked us you know does anyone speak Norwegian we're like no do we need to and they were like uh no because they're kind of judging Norwegian so you don't know and it was, that was actually really perfect um and then obviously the catwalk which you saw um it was that was very unnerving she's like what do I look like um and then the, that was it and we I think there was a big party um, in the hotel that night, but obviously myself and my mom were getting straight to the car and driving back to home um, so that we could go to London for the Ellie Palace. So it was really sad that I missed that, but I, I had to go. Um, so overall, it was an amazing experience. I would really encourage people to apply. People are kind of, is it rigged? No, absolutely not. No way. Like they decided who was going to win. It was, you know what I mean? It, there's nothing shady in the background. There's nothing, you see everything happening. It, like they picked two one and it was, well, obviously this year was much less controversial than last year. Um, which I'll talk about in a minute because obviously there was a remark made about sock knitting which has upset some folk. Um, but I'll talk about that in just a sec. And then what else? Yes, yeah, so there were, uh, I had Martin visited the house before you just have one person that comes with the camera and they shoot it in the house which is really fun um you know they shoot all your knitting and all the things in the house and that's really lovely as well it's all planned in advance it's all lovely. i did say that if you were allergic to cats they couldn't come martin was allergic to cats which is really funny um i would definitely recommend it so yeah that's it and i'm actually wearing my own proper around the house christmas jumper moment Better. it does actually as i look at myself i have the camera watching thing on again and i have to say it might need a little shave so this is the jumper here it is uh, it looks way better on the model as you can see she's a uh, I, I suppose i needed to either make it bigger or be slimmer so it's actually quite i was really pleased with it it's a bit weird 
in terms of loop stitch because I know not a lot of knitters knit loop stitch but you know what I thought it would be different and you know what it's it was time consuming but it was worth it um so the only the trickiest bit so I just cast on I used the the gauge on the ball I should have tested it but I didn't I I just my heart wasn't in testing this much I know sh for design as well which is just totally unforgivable but I figured I'd worked it out it was about right so I cast on I don't know two or three hundred stitches knit a little bit and then start into the loop stitch I loop stitched straight for quite a while and then I started shaping at the sides and shaping quite rapidly because like every time I would try it on I used to, have to transfer it off of the needles for the round to draw it onto a bigger circular so that I could try it on without changing it and blah 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 but I, I started rapidly decreasing kind of about here which you can see and then I was I was a bit puzzled as to how I would transition this because I knew very early on I wasn't going to use loops to tear because literally a bath mat. I'm very careful about how I say the words bath mat <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, so then I put a little garter band. I, st I, I was awake a lot worrying about how I was going to do it. I did worry quite a bit about this. Um, and then I just did some more underarm shaping and then I came up to, and I tried it on all the way. So it's actually custom fit to me. A little bit small, but custom fit to my shape anyway. Although it does look better on this size 10 doll, size 8 doll. Um, and then I shaped out again to where I split for the underarms here. I just split straight off. I don't think I did any fancy arm shaping. And then I came all the way up along. I'm gonna move her slightly further back now so that you can see the sleeve instead. Um, so this is just straight up along. And then I joined them using, uh, at the top, using just a standard tree needle cast off for a shoulder. I then picked up all the way around the sleeve. Now I picked up, so normally you would pick up, I think three rows for, you, that there's a formula for how you would pick up along a sleeve but I picked up all the stitches so that it would give me that extra stitch the extra stitches for creating the puff sleeve which is why it's a little bit you can see that it's too big essentially if it was a regular sleeve I would have had a lot less stitches plus in how you go back and forth doing the short row shaping would also kind of whether it would lie flat against your arm I then just rapidly decreased here and knit straight down and then put a little tiny garter band so the first um the first three rows of this are actually part of the sleeve itself and they're just a regular gar stitch band they do oh they sit at about the same level when it's on me i think they do and then this piece is knit separately so i cast on here knit them up and it's just literally i knit out and i knit back in i shaped it in again so it gives it that kind of it's quite a good stitch in that it's quite robust and that it kind of it, it gives something shape although it would need lining if it was going to do anything else then I just knitted a little bit around the top of the band there and then I grafted those together. It's not the tidiest graft in the world, but it's quite, like unless you're really looking, you won't see the graft in that. Uh, eye cord neckline, which is kind of standard. And then the baubles, you're probably thinking where are the rest of the baubles? Um, they're detachable. In case you ever feel like going to a party is just a tree rather than a Christmas tree. Took those off yesterday so that I could take the photograph for the other blog post, which is up. You can get the little pattern for them kind of fun I like them um I think I might make I'm making a set in pip color work at the moment which will be ready for I imagine you know sure Christmas 2025 or something so they're available but a couple of questions about the lights so I will answer that question in the blog post and I'll put on uh Ravelry as well as where I bought them I don't really recommend the lights because while they are they can go to battery recycle recycling I you know I'm not convinced that they're not a use of plastic unnecessarily but for the jumper competition I thought I would make um, a bit of an exception and that is really it little socks obviously um, and it's probably a good time to talk about Sockgate oh Kirsty, she can't really win she's actually so in person people have been asking me, what's she like she's very professional she's a really nice professional woman who just calls a spade a spade um, she's very personable she's really nice she says what she's thinking and I think Lots of people say, why is she the queen of craft? You know, she's made herself that way. Well, she's really one of the only people who's bringing craft to mainstream TV. Like she's done 15 episodes of sets of ordinary people to TV and they run up to Christmas. And I can't really say any more than that. Like how often do you see knitting on TV? You see a lot more sewing and stuff, but knitting certainly not. It's not fast enough. So I kind of go easy on her. <laughs> Plus with the sock knitting, I was like, what, what? but only in a kind of a joking way because I I'm at so many shows all the time I meet lots of knitters who are like I don't knit socks I hate socks why would you knit socks it's a waste of time 
we all love different things and I guess it's just not knowing that there are like bands of us who just do nothing else but knit socks so I would say go easy on her um you know she is out there every Christmas showing you know whether it's controversially or not that we have hobbies and crafts and it's it's good that there's some kind of press coverage for what we do um I would say to the people who are knitting her socks at the moment um in kind of protest don't knit socks for people who won't wear them <laughs> I would say go and find the flower power fund and Sarah Dr Sarah Holmes and knit socks for her hospice um, sock donations or knit them for charity more for the sock line if they do that again at Yarndale next year go and knitting socks for people who don't want the knitters we don't know <laughs> and I get it I get why we really like I get particular knitting and don't pretend we're not a bit sneery about other people's crafts as well you know scrapbooking mm. look I have no problem with scrapbook I've picked a hobby and I think one of the reasons knitters particularly are really defend not defend protective like why we love our craft is because you have to put a lot of work in to be terrible at knitting in order to make that pe first piece of fabric for you to drop the stitches and get the extra stitches there's a lot of work goes into being a terrible knitter you know that step between being a non-knitter and a terrible knitter there's a big learning curve in there after being a terrible knitter it's much easier to become you know an average knitter and a good knitter and an expert knitter now. because actually once you have the basics it's good but it's getting those basics and for some people that's a big jump so it's kind of you know i get we're protective but you know we should there should be some recognition of the fact that it's on tv she's actually a really nice person um i'd love to spend time with her learning some of her kind of business tips and tricks because she owns a business um but yeah so go sock eight this year you know and even last year with the jumper competition yes as a knitter i'm much more likely to knit i think for me it was jess from ginger twist hers was my favorite i think but the truth is is that knitting has to be accessible as well and i you know many of us knit uh, we're not you know we're not the target audience for a chunky knit although this ta-da nine balls of chunky knit in a heartbeat um it has to be accessible as well or we won't get more knitters and if we don't get more knitters it means that shops like mine won't survive local yarn stores won't survive and the craft will die if we don't get more knitters and showing somebody a really complicated piece of lace or intarsia or like a loop stitch or you know odd shaping in the arms or a fair eye that's not what gets knitters interested you know you start with something like a wool and the gang kit um our wool i'm not wool and the gang's direct customer they're not I'm not their customer uh you might not be um advanced knitters certainly aren't i've never seen them advertise and say something like knitter or in line a magazine or in pom pom because we're not their customer because their customers are young people who are getting interested in the craft for the first time and we need them you know we need all kinds of you know um we need all kinds of people to join knitting um so it's no, it's not so controversial you know look at the craft spread it in whatever way it needs to be spread would be what i would say so yeah happy thoughts for christy um what else would i say uh, and do check out um helen who is connington.nits on instagram jamie who's the real jamie kennedy and sylvia who is with cherries on top all of whom are super accomplished knitters um and bother the life out of all three of them for the patterns either for their hats or necklaces or jumpers or whatever because like <laughs> they're they're all awesome and they just bother them until they produce them we've <laughs> decided that they you know they should share how awesome they are with everybody and that's really it um i'm not i'm not scolding I, I don't like scold and i don't like controversy but i think that you know anything that does something for knitting is really good for us as a community um and i yeah, I'll take new knitters in whatever way they come. <laughs> anyway, the right person won this year. There can be no controversy. And those of us who knit socks know the truth, you know. Ah, you're missing out. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd rather we were smug than evil about it. <laughs> um, but yeah. And that's really it. Um, I'm going to post a... I have two more little things to do and then I promise I'll just be quiet about this. Um, I'm going to post a blog to go with this. Uh, so that you can just see pictures if you don't want to listen to me ramble although in order to know that you'll have seen me rambling um and then i think if i'm very good this afternoon i have a loop stitch sock that i want to get done today to share the pattern for that as well 
maybe maybe not it might be next week before it comes out um but it'll be on the blog if it does uh, uh oh and if you want a copy of the hat the 90 minutes um speaking of 90 minutes haha <laughs> not really 90 minutes um i had to rip it out i literally started decreasing here i decreased really rapidly along the crown as well it was not finished i don't even know if this is the, this might be the other one because you get two out of the two balls um if you want this you can sign up to our mailing list and you'll get the pattern for free if you're already signed up to the mailing list i will be putting the link to it in our christmas newsletter so that you could also have it for free no need to pay for it um however if you are ordering two balls of yarn i'm out of yellow and i'm out of the gray um in the retreat but if you're ordering it there's lots of lovely combinations you could do it and you get the two hats out of two balls with two giant pom poms um, and I will be including uh, paper patterns with all of those at the moment so I've been kind of including them anyway because I you know if you buy a retreat you kind of deserve you know if you just in case you need a re reason to use it although not really because it's such a lovely yarn um, and then what else next on the blog it's uh, vlog itself there'll be a lot of it I think it'll mostly be Facebook live for the next week or so um, we are shipping right up until noon on Friday Royal Mail sale will arrive but uh, before Christmas then but I'm not you know if you are ordering do order sooner rather than later or don't order you know what it's Christmas week people should be kind of winding down and knitting and hopefully everybody's finishing work and everybody's finished their Christmas knits and have a week off and enjoy yourselves I'll just be knitting I think for the most part we're just shipping and answering queries as normal but mostly we'll be knitting at HQ uh, our Christmas party is Thursday night here at the <laughs> HQ myself and there is uh, Bonov has put in a late entry uh, for the jumper competition as has Bob Oak so I'm not guaranteed to win um, but you know I can take the defeat <laughs> and that's it um, thank you for listening and thank you for watching the show if you did and do follow the others they're just amazing people I think we're planning a, re uh, a reunion at Woolen this year or next year not sure yet though honestly waiting for spaces to be announced woolen because i've applied but we're waiting to hear um and also you know see if the others want to go or not but hopefully because it would be great to see them again um and that's it have a lovely afternoon and uh keep knitting socks only the best people know that having socks are the best bye everybody <laughs>